The third, the fourth case is factorizing quadratic trinomials. Quadratic trinomials take the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not zero. Actually, if a is zero, it's not a trinomial anymore. It's not made, it will not be made up of three terms and it will not be a quadratic. Anyway, the question is that you ask yourself first, is it a perfect square expansion? Has it been the result of expanding a perfect square? And the way to test this is to check that the first term, the square root of the first term times the square root of the second term, the third term is equal to two times, no, I'll say that again. Consider this. The 4x squared is 2x all squared. 25 is 5 squared. And the 20x itself is equal to 2 times the root of the first, which is 2x, times the root of the second, which is 5. Since this con condition has been met, then yes, this is the result of a perfect square expansion, and this equals 2x plus 5 whole squared. Let's check this, for example. x squared plus 6x minus 9. What do you think? It is not a perfect square expansion. And the reason is, it's true that the square root of 9 is 3, but the problem is with this minus sign. For perfect squares, the constant term is always positive. Now, another case for the quadratic uh, factorization is a quadratic trinomial where a equals 1. Where a meaning the coefficient of x squared. In this case, we ask ourselves, we need two numbers whose product equals 10 and whose sum equals negative 7. Since the sum is negative 7 and the product is 10, i.e. positive, then we are looking for two negative numbers. Because negative times negative will give me the positive 10, and negative plus another negative will give me the negative 7. And obviously, we are talking about negative 5 and negative 2. In this case, the answer is simply x minus 5 times x minus 2, and this is your factorization. You've done this so many times, so I won't bore you with the details. If you're not confident about this, please go ahead and revise. And the third and final um, kind of expression is when a is not 1, when the coefficient of x squared is not 1. In this case, it's 3. And in this case, I will present two methods. You know, and I think that most of you prefer the long method, the long, boring, slow, but sure method, which is when you multiply the 3 times the negative 10, and you have negative 30. So you need two numbers whose product equals negative 30 and whose sum is equal to the coefficient of x, which is 1. So since the product is negative, we are looking for one positive and one negative number. But since the sum is positive, then the larger of the two numbers is positive. And in this case, we have the 6 and negative 5. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. 6 minus 5 is 1. And then we go ahead and write the x term 
as a sum of 6x minus 5x this together when simplified gives you the x and minus 10 now then you proceed by grouping for those two terms 3x is a common factor you're left with an x plus 2 for those two terms the common factor is minus 5 and you're left with x plus 2 then x plus 2 is a common factor and you're left with 3x minus 5 now this is correct but it's extremely boring and time consuming I urge you to think of another method which is well trial and improvement it's not really trial and error but there's a lot of logic in it and let's see the way I would do this and um, I would consider this expression and I know that it's the result of multiplying out two brackets consider the factors of 3x squared there are no other options except for 3x and x I don't know anything about the signs yet inside the brackets I only know that they are different because the, the product of the constant is minus 10 so one of those must be a minus one of those must be a plus but I don't know where to put the minus in this bracket or in that bracket and it really makes a difference because the x term here is different than the x term here I'm going to do this really slowly to show you how you can eliminate the possibilities I would think of the factors of 10 and I would say what if 10 was here and 1 was here forget the signs when you multiply you have a 10x forget the sign again 10x maybe in the positive maybe in the negative and a 3x is there a way from 10x and 3x that you can get an x no no matter what the signs are so this is not the option what if 1 was here and 10 was here is there a way of getting an x from 30x and an x there is no way well the other two factors of the 10 are 5 and 2 so let me try 2 and 5 5 times 3x is 15x and 2x is there a way of getting an x from those two no there isn't and there is only one option left which is 2 here and 5 here how can I get an x from 6x and 5x well the only way to do that is if the positive is here and the negative is here that gives you 6x minus 5x now obviously this may seem too complicated but I did go through all the possibilities before I reached the final answer just to show you how to eliminate if the numbers are easy usually this is the quickest method uh, to proceed and this concludes our lesson for today please revise prepare any questions and write any notes or comments as you see fit